I'd like to conceptually discuss equilibrium in the second and third dimensions. So by properly defining the plane and space within which our rigid body exists, it allows us to associate forces and motions along a particular axis or inside a plane. This is important because if we understand how our body behaves and how, it's work, how it exists in physical space, we can properly construct equations for analysis. So in engineering mechanics, we're analyzing the performance of a body under load. So in this course, everything will be in static equilibrium, meaning it will be at rest or at constant velocity. So let's start with 2D equilibrium. So in this condition, we have to define our axes, and I'm going to define the 2D equilibrium in the Y and X direction. So this vertical, this vertical and horizontal direction make up the XY plane, which is the surface of this board. So any objects we have living inside that space are confined to the board. So what object should we use? Um, I got it. AH-64 Apache helicopter. Rigid body along our plane. But wait a second, this is a 3D body. We can't use this. So we have to resolve it, we have to represent it in two dimensions. So now, our Apache is in the second dimension along the surface of this plane, along the surface of the XY plane. But it can still move. It can move forward or backwards in the X direction. It can move up or down. But it can also spin. Pilots call this pitch. It can pitch about the Z axis, the axis coming directly at you right now. So those three degrees of freedom give us three equations of equilibrium for which to solve for the forces acting on this body. So in 2D, we can sum forces in the X direction, we can sum forces in the Y direction, or we can sum the moments about the Z axis. And all of those must equal zero because we're at static equilibrium. So that would mean the Apache is hovering at a constant elevation or a constant altitude, or it's moving forward at a constant velocity, or it's parked on the airfield, okay? Well, let's move to three dimensions. What does that change? So now we get rid of our 2D body. We go back to our 3D body. So now our space includes the space moving forward to the screen right now. So our Z axis is now available to us. So this 3D body does not exist, is not confined to the surface of the blackboard. It can move laterally along the z-axis. So that's another degree of freedom. But it can also roll like this about the x-axis. And finally, it can spin about the y-axis. So that's called a yaw. Pilots call that yaw when it spins like this. So we can roll, yaw, and then pitch. Those are the three uh, types of rotation for a, for a helicopter. So those three extra degrees of freedom also give us three more equations of equilibrium for this static body, for the static equilibrium. So in 3D, we can sum forces in the Z direction. We can sum the moments about the X axis now, that's that rolling. And we can sum moments about the y-axis, that yaw. So we can see here, equate, uh, 2D or 3D equilibrium is only defines the degrees of freedom by which our body can have forces acted upon it or the directions it can move. So we shouldn't be intimidated by a three-dimensional analysis. In fact, it gives us more equations to work with to analyze this body. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial about 2D and 3D equilibrium, and uh, we'll see you in class.